This is a 2017 Bentley Continental Super Sports. In fact, this is the 2017 Bentley Continental Super Sports. It's the only one available for sale in the entire country right now. And it's offered by Bentley of Tyson's Corner, the excellent Bentley dealer here in the Washington DC area for a shade over $310,000, which is $110,000 more than the base price of a regular Bentley Continental GT. So what exactly is the Continental Super Sports? <laughs> In short, the Continental Supersports is the most powerful Bentley ever created. This one has 700 horsepower and 750 pound-feet of torque, and it'll do 209 miles per hour, which is more than a Lamborghini Huracan, more than a Lexus LFA, more than a Ferrari F50 in a four-seater, leather-lined luxury Bentley. In fact, this is the fastest Bentley ever made and the fastest four-seat car ever in history. For a little context, the fastest two-seater car in history is the Bugatti Veyron Supersports. The fastest three-seater car in history is the McLaren F1. And the fastest four-seater car? That's this. In short, I think this car is kind of Bentley's version of the Hellcat. They took the standard Continental GT, which is a nice luxurious cruiser, and then they just went mad, making it absolutely insane on every level. For more proof, consider this. This car weighs 5,300 pounds, which is the same as a Toyota Camry plus a Lotus Elise, and yet it does 0 to 60 in 3.4 seconds, which is faster than a Porsche Carrera GT. It's madness, it's deranged. I'll start by showing you around the Continental Super Sports, and then I'm gonna take it out on the road and drive the Bentley Hellcat in all its crazy glory. And then I'm gonna give it a Doug score. And as always, click the link below to go to autotrader.com slash oversteer for more of my thoughts on the Bentley Continental Super Sports experience and for a list of other crazy fast luxury cars currently listed for sale on Autotrader. Right now, on to the features and quirks. I'll start with one of my favorite little quirks about this car, and that's the B logo on the shift lever. Now, you press the B Bentley logo to shift between gears, which is already kind of cool in itself, but the coolest part is that when you switch it over to manual mode, the B logo retracts into the shift lever because manual mode is sportier and because you don't need to push the button to switch between gears anymore. Move it back over from manual mode and the B logo pops right back up. That's a tiny little detail most people won't notice, but it's a kind of little thing that separates the truly high-end luxury brands from just the regular ones. Another cool feature about this car, this car has really big long doors in order to make it easier to get into the back seat. But the problem is, for front seat passengers, it's then hard to reach the front seat belt because it's all the way back here because the doors are so long. So Bentley thought about that. When you climb into this car, watch right here. The second you shut the door, the seat belt is delivered to you on this little automatic thing that makes it easier to grab. When you belt yourself in, and start the car, the little retractor goes right back into its home. Another awesome feature in this car is over on the driver's door panel. Now, obviously you have buttons to roll down the front windows and the tiny little rear windows. Yes, you can roll them down, but if you press this little button in the middle and it lights up, then you can use the rear window roll down buttons to roll down all four windows at once. Just tap any of the two rear window buttons and then all the windows go down. Every car should have an all windows go down button. I don't know why more of them don't, but I'm glad this one does. It provides a nice open airy driving experience. Next up, here's a cool one. This car can measure its own tire pressures. Now you're thinking, well, that's nothing. A Jeep Wrangler can do that, and that's true, but here's the cool thing about this car. Right now it's in normal mode, and you measure the tire pressures, and they're fine, but put it in maximum speed mode, and watch what happens with the current tire pressure. That's right, the tire pressures are too low to go maximum speed right now, and so it starts yelling at you. This car not only measures its tire pressures, but can tell you if the tire pressure is right, depending on the type of driving you want to do. Another amazing thing about this car is the simple quality of everything inside of it. Nothing jiggles, nothing shakes. Of course, there's stitching everywhere. The seats are this finely quilted leather in Alcantara, and they're gorgeous. Obviously, they put that on the seats. More impressive is the fact that they put it on the door panels, where you rarely touch, you just look at. Even more impressive is the fact that they put it on the rear seats, which, let's be honest, no one will ever really climb in. Even more impressive, look at the materials inside the front center console. They're really amazing. Those are nice 
closer than the materials on the seats in my normal car, and they're hidden away in this thing. And maybe the most impressive of all, even though no one will ever use those back seats back there, everybody knows that, the rear center console is carpeted. When you're selling cars for $310,000, you can afford to just put the nicest stuff everywhere and make your customers pay for it, and they will. Next cool feature of this car is right in here. That would be the heated seats. Of course it has heated seats and the cooled seats. Of course it has cooled seats. But the interesting thing about this car is you can turn on the heated seats and the cooled seats at the same time. I'm not sure why you would ever want to do that, but in case you've ever wanted your butt to feel two different temperatures at once in the Bentley Continental Super Sports, that's possible. Of course, with almost every car I drive, I find a couple of things in the interior that I would change, and this car is no exception. For example, when you open the door, it says Super Sports, one of 710 cars. I love the idea that it shows you how exclusive your car is, but why does it say one of 710 cars? What was I going to confuse it with? One of 710 trucks? One of 710 tuk-tuks? It should just say one of 710. This may be nitpicky, but it is a little strange. I've never seen that in any other limited production car. Another thing I changed is the hood latch. Take a look at this. Because of the giant leather lined door panel and the big speaker in it, when the door is closed, you can't unlatch the hood. I'm serious. You have to open the door in order for the hood latch to have enough room to be able to unlatch the hood. I've never seen like this. This is the kind of design flaw that you had in 70s cars. You never see this sort of stuff in modern cars. Then again, that's sort of the only thing like that in this car. And maybe more importantly, most Bentley owners will never even know where the hood latch is. Moving on to the outside, we start with one of my favorite things about the Continental Super Sports, and that would be its exhaust. Now, in regular mode, the exhaust sounds pretty good. Take a listen. But this car really comes alive in sport mode. That's where it sounds really amazing. Now, every other car with a sport exhaust has a button in the inside. You push it and the sport exhaust comes on. But Bentley doesn't bother with such plebeian buttons. Instead, you can only activate the sport exhaust in this car in one of three ways. Number one is you put it into sport mode in the transmission. Number two is you put it into manual mode in the transmission. Or number three is you pull one of the paddles. And when you do any of those three things, you can physically hear from the inside the exhaust note change. And when you going in sport mode or with the paddles going in this car, the exhaust sounds like a thunderstorm. The problem is I can't really demonstrate it for you because you can't turn on the sport exhaust when you're in neutral. Nonetheless, here is me attempting to show you what it sounds like. Okay, so that really isn't very good because I can't go above 2,000 RPM without the car moving, but you'll have to take my word for it. The sport exhaust in this car does sound pretty sporty. And since I'm around back, might as well talk about some of the interesting things in the trunk area. For one thing, how do you access the trunk at all? There's no latch under here. It's not there. You just have to know the secret Bentley handshake, which in this case is pressing the winged B. That unlocks it. Once the trunk is open, you will find right here a charge port. No, that's not a charge port for your cell phone so that you can tailgate with your Continental Super Sports. Instead, that's a charge port for the car. Bentley knows their owners really well, and a lot of people let the cars sit and sit and sit as they drive other cars or travel for work or whatever. And so they know that the batteries will go flat. So they stick this charge port in here so that you can have your car plugged in so the battery won't die between your long periods where you don't drive it. Also in the trunk, one of my favorite things in any modern Bentley is the spare tire. Bentley provides you with a spare with one caveat. It is bright red. All Bentleys have this bright red spare. So if you get a flat, you put on the spare, it's bright red. I've always felt, and I truly believe, this is intended to shame you into going to the dealer to get your tire fixed as opposed to just sticking on another one and driving on it for a while. I think that bright red spare is an attempt to get the dealer service departments to make a little bit more money. And that's a brilliant tactic. Now, the attention to detail that I mentioned on the inside also carries over to other stuff that you can't always see. For example, the gas cap in this car is this beautiful B gas cap with a lot of weight to it, and it's even designed so that it shows you which way to twist it. Same thing with the oil cap under the hood. Those are two things they could have skimped on. They could have saved money and not put really nice ones there, but they didn't. And that's what you get when you get a Bentley. Now, in terms of major exterior changes to the Super Sports, instead of the standard Continental GT, one of them is really obvious. That would be the giant wing on the back in carbon fiber. But the wing isn't the only change on this car. In fact, there are quite a few when you start to look around. It has, for example, unique wheels. The rocker panels are also made of carbon fiber, and they're a little lower than the regular ones. And the front and rear ends also a little lower, thanks to the addition of some carbon fiber lips. Even the mirrors are carbon fiber, which is an impressive weight-saving step that most automakers don't bother with. <laughs> 
a weight saving step on a car that weighs 5,300 pounds. But carbon fiber is cool and Bentley knows that, so you get all the carbon fiber. And maybe the coolest thing of all, all the chrome trim has been removed from the outside of this car. You really only see black trim except for the wheels. This is not intended to be a luxury build at all. This is a high performance car and those subtle little things plus the not so subtle wing make that very clear. One other item I've always found interesting about this car, if you look at the cluster for the brake lights and the turn signals, you'll notice that there's not enough room for reverse lights. There's just the brake light, the turn signal, and reflective stuff. So where did the reverse lights go? Well, here they are, down here at the bottom of the bumper. I've always found that strange. It's like they were an afterthought, and Bentley forgot about the reverse lights. Although I'm sure that didn't happen. The car was designed that way, and Bentley knows a lot more about this stuff than I do. And speaking of lighting, check this out. The light at the bottom of the mirror displays the Bentley logo on the ground when you open the door at night or inside, in case you forget how cool you are. And finally, what would a Doug DeMuro review of an interesting luxury car be without showing you the headlight washers? I'm pretty cool. <laughs> So the Continental Super Sports is already a rather unique and exciting car, even when I'm just standing here poking around it, pushing buttons to see what they do. But how does it drive? Time to get the fastest four-seat car ever made out on the road. All right. The first thing you notice inside this car, like in all Bentleys and high-end luxury cars, it is hilariously insulated from everything and everyone. You just feel and hear very little of the road. Now, when you're in drive, as I mentioned earlier, you don't have the, the, the crazy sport exhaust, but if you do any of those things, you can get the sport exhaust active. So I put it in sport now. Oh, oh, the sound of that. I just love this car because it has this ability to be this crazy thing, but also really comfortable. This car has sports car performance. I mean, a lot perform most modern sports cars, except the very upper echelon. Uh, but sometimes it's nice to just have like the ultra luxury experience too. And this car's like, okay, you can have both. The exhaust backfire is just so loud inside here. It sounds like there's a volcano erupting, like, like one county over. It's like, what was that? And then it sounds like a thunderstorm. I put the window down. I love that. All that sound, even at just 2,500 RPM. And yet, I'm also sitting in this just gilded Bentley with all this luxury and leather everywhere. I hope that, that sound shows up on camera because you can hear it just like crazy. Every time I let off the gas, it's like a thunderstorm is erupting overhead. All right, taking a corner. Wow, really flat. Oh my. <laughs> Oh my God, that's crazy. Wow, well that's about as fast as you're gonna get out of a car like this, I think. I'm also really shocked, it's just good in the corners. It's, it's flat, it's controlled. The steering is lighter than you'd want it to be, but that's sort of Bentley, the Bentley way, but it, the body roll is, is very minimal. Did they make a sports car? Continental GT now has been out since 2005, and they've never fully redesigned it. They've updated it a lot over the years, obviously, but it's never gotten a complete and utter redesign uh, ground up. This is definitely the best one that I've been in. Not only does it have sort of all the latest technology that you'd expect from one of these, but uh, the performance is the performance is modern too. All right, floor in here. <gasps> oh my God. But the thing is, I know it's not as fast as the craziest stuff I've done. Like I did the Audi R8 V10 Plus, which is faster, but that didn't weigh 5,300 pounds. <laughs> so I'm sitting in this fully leather lined cabin with leather everywhere, leather on the ceiling. And then I do that and it's accelerating as like just a little slower than a 488. It's like, yeah, it's like, it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be possible, this car. The handling is really good. I mean, you can feel the weight. There's no doubt you can feel the car's weight. Uh, and, and, but the steering is, is precise enough. It corners just flat. There's not much body roll. A true sports car would give you a little bit more confidence, would have a lower center of gravity. You'd kind of throw it into the corner more, whereas this one, you're sort of sitting on top of it, it goes into the corner, but it's very stable. Uh, not something I'd expect from a car like this. God, the thing about this car is when you make a right turn, you don't even really have to look because... <laughs> How? How is that real? Bentleys and stuff don't get any credit because they're a luxury brand as opposed to a Ferrari or an Aston Martin that's a sports car brand. And so Bentleys are older for old people who want luxury, but, but 
these cars are more capable than I think a lot of car enthusiasts realize. This car has 750 pound-feet of torque. 750. I mean, that's probably twice what a 488 has. It's just, it's just endless acceleration at any speed. It shifts, and then there's just more to come. And it's really incredible. So that's the Bentley Continental Super Sports. I think the comparison with the Hellcat is an accurate one, admittedly at a much different price point. Bentley is known for making sedate cars. Fast cars, yes, but serene, sedate luxury cars that will keep you calm and insulated from the outside world. Then they make this thing, and it has all that stuff, plus it's faster than virtually every Ferrari manufactured in the last decade. Anyway, on to the Doug score. Starting with the weekend categories that measure fun factor. Styling is good, but by now very familiar after more than a decade. I like the additions for the Super Sports, but I suspect some may find the spoiler to be a bit much, so it gets a 6 out of 10. Acceleration is amazing. 0 to 16, 3.4 seconds easily gives it a 9 out of 10, placing it ahead of the Ferrari F40 in the Porsche 997 Turbo. Handling is good, secure and sporty, but steering is too light and the car simply weighs too much for an ultra high score here, so it gets a respectable 7 out of 10. Cool factor is debatable. It's certainly cooler than average, but it doesn't quite cross into the Ferrari or Lamborghini echelon, even in super sports guys, so it gets a 7 out of 10. Finally, there's importance, which measures significance. This is a more important car than your average Honda Accord, of course, but there have been many different special editions of the Continental GT. Many, many different special editions. This one is better than all of them, but it's still just the next one in line, giving it a 6 out of 10 and bringing the total weekend score to 35 out of 50, meaning it's knocking on the door of the supercar crop. Not bad for a Bentley. As for the daily scores, starting with features, the Super Sports has some cool modern tech, but it's missing a lot of the latest gadgets that modern luxury cars have, simply on account of this car being older, like lane keep assist and a 360 camera. It gets a 6 out of 10. When it comes to luxury, however, it's not missing much. The ride is a bit too harsh for a perfect score, and the visibility is a bit compromised due to its teardrop shape, but it still earns a solid and difficult to achieve 8 out of 10. Quality measures reliability and materials. Materials are truly tremendous, highly upscale, but reliability is always a little questionable with complicated cars like this, especially when they have twin turbocharged 12 cylinder engines that make 700 horsepower. Still, since it's brand new, it has the comfort of a long warranty and it gets an 8 out of 10. Next up is cargo volume. The Super Sport's 13 cubic feet of trunk space gives it a 4 out of 10. Poor fuel economy would normally drop that down to a 3, but back seats help its case, so it remains a 4. Finally, there's value. This car has some huge benefits, like its top speed, its massive acceleration, and its luxurious cabin, but $310,000. It's neither a terrible value nor a great one, and it gets a 5 out of 10, meaning its total daily score is a 31 out of 50, placing it near the very top, which makes sense. Add it up, and the total Doug score is 66 out of 100, which is good, and this car deserves it. It's fast and fun and exciting, and also really nice and luxurious. It's a great all-around car, and if Bentley finally redesigned the Continental GT with more tech and a more updated look, I think it could be the Doug score champion.